Dr. Fulorun Shaw Alakija, Vice Chair of Famba Oil and one of the world's richest women of African descent. She sits with Lady Rosa Whitaker in this engaging and insightful conversation about the intersection of divine purpose and commercial success. This is her story, Faith and a Billionaire's Journey. Before we hear from this awesome woman, let me just tell you, one of the things that makes her such an awesome woman is that she wears so many hats. Um, first, she's a woman of God, and these are hats all simultaneously. She is a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a business mogul, an author, a philanthropist, a, a global icon, and as you can see, she's also a fashionista. You wear many hats, you're multidimensional. How do you carry that kind of weight with so much grace and poise and dignity? I think a lot of women struggle with that multitasking. You already said it, through grace. Through grace because there's no other way. We can't achieve much without Jesus. You already said that in his Bible. With him, we can make all things possible. The Bible, I'm sure, should have underlined all. But we have to see that underlining. We have to see the full meaning of all and we have to key into it and trust it that it's everything that we can do through his grace, through his ability. It's not our ability. He has given us guidelines, guidelines that we should live by. And if we really truly do trust in him, he can make all the difference. And what's grace? Being able to achieve what we couldn't have achieved on our own. We haven't earned it. It is a gift. So, we need to walk in it. We need to appreciate it. We need to make good use of it. And when you do, you'll find that you really truly don't need to struggle. Because God will make a way where there seems to be no way. That is so true. And for some of our young women, um, a few of them, yesterday you provided so graciously everyone with a copy of Flourish Africa. And I like the title. That must have been, God must have given you that title. Flourish Africa. He did. Okay. There's no limit to what a person can achieve in life. And so a number of people asked about how they want to know more about Flourish Africa and how they can be a part of it. Flourish Africa was designed for women by women. It's a, a, an online platform that's supposed to empower the women, encourage women, and inspire women. We will be meeting each other on that platform. Women from all walks of life in different parts of the world. But we've launched it online last Friday and its first conference will be coming up in October in Nigeria. And we'll be taking that. I'm sure there'll be a time that we'll bring it to Ghana as well. It's going to be a physical, biannual conference, but online daily. And there'll be contributors on a daily basis that will be talking on different topics that concern women to help us to be the women God has created us to be, to be able to achieve all that he has had in stock for us, things that we are struggling with, to be able to learn from one another and get to the levels that we could never have imagined. But when we work together, we are moving forward 
in full force rather than struggling on our own. We'll be learning and sharing each other's experiences. And I will be on that platform on a monthly basis responding to questions that have come up in the last one month. And I have found that because I speak in different parts of our country and our continent and our world, I've found that a lot of women have so many questions and they want to know so much. And there's very little I can do on a one-to-one -one basis. So that platform will help us and help me to reach out to all of our women, wherever they are. So you are even, you know, it was said one time that your impact and your footprints are immeasurable because you've impacted so many. And now you're even deepening that impact, especially with women who can now connect with you. And as older women, we have a biblical mandate to mentor the younger women. So it is really a wonderful, I think, God-mandated um, opportunity. This notion of philanthropy, it hasn't yet um, taken Africa by storm. Um, it, it is something that is relatively new or maybe different. Um, and that's just according to the statistics. I've always thought maybe because Africans have so many extended families that the notion of just giving to strangers or giving to this organization or contributing um, just hasn't taken hold, I don't know. But you are at the forefront of African philanthropy. What do you have to say to the business leaders who are here that have not really had that revelation about philanthropy and giving to strangers? Yes. Let me start from where you started. Ha Africans do have a heart to give. And the Bible did say that we should start with our families and our extended families because charity begins at home. So we do that naturally from instinct. And we're very good at that. But we find that the world around us does more than that. So there's a, an awakening in Africa now for us to do more and be your neighbor's keeper. I believe that if each and every one of us in the entire world can look around us and see something that we can do to make a difference in the lives of those around us, those who are struggling. Sometimes it's not just about money. Sometimes it's about your talent. Sometimes it's about your time. But have a heart of giving, stretching out your hand to those who are in one form of need or another. Sometimes you find that some have struggled so much and the next thing that they're thinking about is how to commit suicide. But if you're there, holding their hand, encouraging them, talking to them, letting them know that there's a lot more that life has to offer than thinking that this is the end for them, that they can't do more or better than what they've been, they have achieved already, and that they can't even achieve anything further, and they think that the next thing to do is to jump, jump over the bridge. If you're there to encourage them, you've done something. And if you're there to, to, to talk to them about Christ, you've won somebody to the Lord. There's so much that we can do. It's, people think, oh, I'm not a billionaire, so there's nothing I can do. It's not about billionaires. When you have a cup of water that you can offer to your neighbor, it's part of giving. But we have to have a heart to give in the first place before we can give and give and continue to give. Coming back to the businesses and the businessmen and women, 
we have to learn and trust in the Lord. We know what the Bible says. Give and it will come back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. We know how Isaac sowed in the land, even in the times of famine. And despite the fact that others were struggling, there was, there was dryness everywhere. But as a child of God, he chose to sow. And each time that he sowed, he prospered the more. The Bible says he continued to prosper. He, he was even more prosperous as he sowed. So we have to learn the act of giving. You, when you lend to the Lord, wow, try it. You cannot lose. Jesus has told us that when you give a cup to the thirsty, you're doing it unto him. You're helping him. He's not going to come down the way he came down last time. He sends people. And business people are the people that can give more than those who don't have. But don't forget I told you, we all have something to give. Don't think it's for the millionaires. It's for the billionaires. Give out of that which he's already given you. He gave it to you in the first place. It belongs to him. You are a custodian. You are keeping that wealth was put into your hands for a reason. You have become a blessing so that you can bless others. You have been blessed so that you can be blessed other. You can bless others. We have to understand it. Let it resonate in our hearts. Let it germinate and let it bring forth good fruit. When you give, you are sowing. God does not give harvests. He gives seeds. He expects you to sow that seed to raise a harvest. And when you raise that harvest, then you share it. You're not, it's not that you're not, you're not allowed to keep some for yourself. Of course, by all means, do that. You're allowed to. But you must look around you and do what God desires of you. And that is to give. And as you give, you'll continue to prosper. Your business will expand beyond your imagination because he has a hand in it. Because even business in the first place is God's business. Business is God's business. People think, a lot of people think, oh, you know what? This is business. Let's leave God out of it. On Sunday, we'll go to church. No, it's not about that. It's about you letting God direct you, guide you, give you the answers, and give you the ideas. Ideas that come directly from his throne room come with grace, come with prosperity, come with blessing in such dimensions that you can never imagine or think. The type that has surprised me He's a God of surprises. He has proved that to me on many occasions. Occasions when I was down, but did I let it keep me down? No. I, it ra I raised myself up again, and I looked onto the cross, and I held onto it, and I did not let go. And in the business that he placed in my hands through the oil license, I have never, ever forgotten where that came from. And I continue to give him honor and glory. And I talk about him. Everywhere I go, I let people know that he was the one. He was the one. Had it not been for him, where would I be? I wouldn't even be, be sitting here talking to you about my father, about my God, who did it all for me. And he who did it for me can do it for you. Yes, I was a secretary. I'm not ashamed to say that. I told you yesterday how I became a secretary. Not because my father couldn't afford it. He had 50, 50, 56 children. 
He sent 40-something of us abroad to go and study. He had the money. He was a billionaire of his time. So it wasn't about that. But it was that, that was just his notion. And what have I done with it? I have been using it, myself and, the, uh, and our partners in the Agbami field, to bless others. We have, we have done projects that are worthy of notes. 26 chest clinics around Nigeria. Six. Six hybrid libraries and 21 scientific laboratories. Over 11,000 11, um, engineers have been given scholarships. Yes. And we continue to do that. We are not resting on our oars. Those are part of our CSR. Because you cannot eat and say you're not going to, uh, you're, you're not going to stretch out your hand to, to others who need to eat, who need to benefit from your resources, resources that God has given you. You cannot shut that door. And we will not shut that door. And it is, it is in the same spirit, it is in the same spirit of giving that God spoke to me when I asked him about what I can do for him. Always ask God what you can do for him. Stop saying, give me, give me, give me. You need to give to God too. There's always something you can do for God. And he spoke to me and told me to go and look after his widows, look after his orphans. And we've been wiping away their tears. And God, we know God is pleased. God is pleased. And guess what? We don't give them fish because they will eat the fish and they will forget they've eaten the fish. And tomorrow, they will ask for more fish. But we teach them to fish. When you teach them to fish, then they can fish for themselves. When they fish for themselves, they're able to do things that you and I can do. Don't forget, Society turned their backs on them. They had nowhere else to go. Each time, they, they lose their husbands. They cry and cry and cry. They cry unto the Lord. But I tell you, God is mindful about widows. He loves them. He says he is their husband. And he's the father of the orphans. So he has sent people like me and my, 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 my friends who are trustees and, uh, you know, to, to, to assist them and wipe away those tears. The Bible did not tell us that God took part of Adam's brains and Adam was left with three quarters and a quarter was given to, to Eve. No. Is there another secret that you would like? She just, she just did tell the secret. I have a lot of mantras. Mantras that are guidelines. Mantras that have been formulated through the things in my heart, the way I behave, the way I conduct myself, the, the way I go about my daily business, the way I live my life, my, my lifestyles. And, and stuff like that. And I have defined the ingredients of success. You will find it in um, my profile, the same one that um, um, uh, Lady Rosa has uh, been waving. Uh, I, I, I analyzed, um, I described what success is. S, for you to sacrifice, sacrifice daily to make a difference by going the extra mile. You, utilize your time and your talent. Because when you waste it, you find that time lost can never be regained. When you waste your talent, before you can 
be able to pick it up again. You've lost a lot already. C, consistently focus on your goals. Because there will be tough times. And when the tough are, are hit with challenges, when the weak are hit with challenges, you find that it's the tough that get going. And then the second C is that you should have credibility and reliability as your watchword. Ignorance can be expensive. When you think you can do things your way and not God's way, you can get your fingers burnt. E, educate. Educate yourself. Refresh yourself. Renew yourself. And continue to retrain yourself. As you do that, you'll find that you'll continue to, to prosper. And S, say no to those who are trying to tell you that there's no way that you can achieve anything by going that way. Say no to those who are trying to bring you down. Those who are trying to discourage you. Don't let them discourage you. And then I, S, the last S, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. <laughs> seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you will find that all other things will follow. Never leave God out of it. It's all about God. Thank you. As a successful leading female entrepreneur, how did you ensure that your voice was heard in the boardroom and you were not just seen as a pretty face? <laughs> and then the Praise. second part of the question is how do you reconcile the narcissism of success? Because people can be kind of, you know, they can be kind of negative towards successful people and the empathy of God. So um, the first one, how did you make sure that men in general or in that boardroom, they didn't just see you as a pretty face? Well, you have to prove yourself. Yes. You have to prove that you're able. And how do you prove that, that you're able? You have to make sure that you prepare. You prepare yourself. Things that you do not know, you go and find out about. If you need to find mentors, by all means, do that. If you need to go online, by all means, do that. If you need to go for training sessions, yes, I made sure that I went for trainings in different parts of the world to improve myself, to ensure that I would know what I'm saying. And in some cases, I let my children teach me. I went knocking on doors to get answers, to know what I'm talking about, so that I could flow in technical meetings. And people would normally tend, especially men, would normally tend to think that, yes, you are just a pretty face. Uh, what could there be to you? They forget that God created both men and women with brains. The Bible did not tell us that God took part of Adam's brains and Adam was left with three quarters and a quarter was given to, to Eve. No. He gave Adam brains and he gave Eve brains. In fact, God was even partial to the woman. We have a lot of virtues to assist the men folk. And we use it to give them the support that they need. Without the neck, the head cannot stand. They need us. So, we arm ourselves by preparing ourselves. By being all-rounders. To be able to be round pegs in round holes. Wow, you know, and also I think you will agree, there's nothing wrong with beauty and brains. So don't feel if they think you're just 
um, a pretty face. Thank you all very much. Mrs. Alakija, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be with you. Okay, thank let's you. show her how much we love and appreciate her. Thank you so much. Earlier in the day, Dr. Alakija got a beautiful surprise from some widows and orphans she supports.